Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we're going to take a look at single phase full wave midpoint type rectifier with R load. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a single phase full wave midpoint type rectifier. We have an AC power supply which is sinusoidal in nature. So we'll represent it as Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t. We also have a transformer through which the circuit is connected. So the sinusoidal supply is connected through means of a center tapped arrangement wherein in the secondary side a tapping is taken at this point and it is connected to a resistive load. We have two diodes D1 and D2 in this case and when we compare it with a half wave rectifier circuit we only have one diode isn't it? So this is basically one of the key differences when we look into the circuit arrangement point of view. We have one additional diode and we have a transformer. Now, in order to understand the circuit in a much better way, let us follow a regular pattern. That is what happens to the circuit during positive half cycle. During positive half cycle, the supply voltage will be positive in this particular fashion, isn't it? So consequently, this voltage will be appearing at this point. And if we assume that as V is, what happens over here is we are making an assumption at the first point. That is the turns ratio between the primary and the secondary side is equal to one. So what happens is equal amount of voltage will be induced in the secondary side in this case. So that is plus minus V s and V s. So because positive is connected to the p-type material of diode D1, the diode D1 will be forward biased and it will be acting as a short circuit as a representation over here. And if you carefully observe over here, negative point of the power supply is connected to the p-type material of diode D2. As a result, D2 is acting as reverse biased. Basically, it is acting as an open circuit. So what happens is, there is some amount of current that is flowing through in this particular direction. It flows through this direction and it flows through this direction, isn't it? And if you are considering that current to be the load current I out, so the direction is indicated over here. And the voltage will be plus minus, that is V out. So if you carefully observe, what is the value of V out that we are getting here? So let us apply KVL through this loop. So what we will be getting? We are assuming when it is living at the negative terminal, we will be considering the same sign. That is minus V out. Again, if it goes through this direction, that is plus V s. Again, when it goes through this direction, this is basically a short circuit and that is equal to zero. So you'll be having V out is equal to V s. Basically, whatever you are supplying at the supply terminals will be appearing at the low terminals. So this is a very important observation. So what happens during positive half cycle? The output voltage will follow the supply voltage. That is the input voltage in this case. So, so let's move on. So what happens during negative half cycle? So during negative half cycle, we will be following the similar analysis that is the supply will be minus n plus in this particular fashion. As a result, we will be having minus V s appearing at this terminal. And because of this, we have minus plus V s over here and we have minus plus V s over here. And since negative is connected to the P type material of diode D1, it is reverse biased and acts as open circuit. Whereas in case of diode D2, since plus is connected to the positive terminal of diode D2, it acts as short circuit as it is forward biased. So in this case, what happens? The current flows through this path. The current flows through this path and the current flows through this path. Basically, if you are assuming that to be the load current that is I out, the direction of current is in this particular fashion. As a result, the output voltage is plus and minus and we will be considering it as V out. Now, if you are applying the similar sort of analysis that we used to do, that is the KVL across this loop, what we will be getting is minus to plus, so plus V s. Again, this is basically zero volt. Again, at this point, if you carefully observe plus to minus, so it is basically minus V out is equal to zero. So V s is equal to V out again. 
So that means whatever you are supplying at the input terminal, you will be getting the same thing at the output terminal. That is Vs is equal to Vout in this case as well. If now there is one important point called as peak inverse voltage. So I will be talking about it in a little bit of detail. But if we apply KVL through this loop, this second loop with respect to the positive half cycle diagram, what do we get? So plus to minus that is minus Vs. Again, if we consider this as VD2, that is the voltage across diode D2, so minus to plus, we will be getting plus VD2. And again, if you consider plus to minus, that is minus V out is equal to zero. So what will happen is we know that V out is equal to Vs from this particular expression, isn't it? If we call this as one, so you have minus Vs plus VD2 minus Vs is equal to zero. So you have VD2 is equal to two times of Vs. So what is Vs? Vs is nothing but Vm sin omega t. So Vd2 is equal to two times Vm. That is when omega t is equal to pi by two. So at omega t is equal to pi by two, the maximum peak inverse voltage, that is the voltage across Vd2 will be equal to two times Vm. So when you're designing this diode, what should happen is that the diode should be capable of withstanding two times the peak voltage that you are supplying. So this is a very, very important point. Now let's move on and take a look at the waveforms. So the supply voltage waveform is sinusoidal in nature and let us consider one and a half cycle approximately represented over here. And what happens to V out and I out? So the waveform or the nature of waveform for V out and I out is basically the same. And during positive half cycle, we know that V out is equal to Vs and it will follow exactly whatever is supplied. So you're getting the same waveform over here at this point. And during negative half cycle, what happened? Diode D2 was conducting. As a result, again, you will exactly get the same shape of waveform. Again, this will continue for the next half cycle. This is basically when D1 is turned on and this is basically when D2 is turned on and this is basically when D1 is turned on again. So the cycle repeats and you're basically seeing a rectified output voltage that is during both positive and negative half cycles. Whereas in case of half way rectifiers, you used to only get a rectified output voltage for only one half of the cycle, isn't it? And that is why you call this as a full wave rectifier. And since we are using a transformer and taking a tapping at the midpoint, we called it as center tap midpoint type full wave rectifier circuit. Now what happens to the average output voltage expression? So these expressions are to be derived because these are popularly used in numericals and these are very important. So average output voltage, we can also represent it as V out. So V average is equal to one by pi into integration of zero to pi into Vm sin omega t. Now you might be having a question as why is it one by pi and not one by two pi? So it is one by pi because we have to consider it till the half cycle that is pi because if you're considering it over two pi then the average output voltage will be equal to zero isn't it and that is why we're considering till pi and zero to pi is basically till the point where diode d1 conducts and as a result when we substitute and simplify this expression that is i'll be taking vm outside in this case and you will be left out with minus cos omega t when you're integrating sin omega t so that is zero to pi now you will be getting Vm by pi minus of minus one. That is cos pi is basically minus one minus again cos zero is equal to the lower limits. When you're substituting cos zero, you'll be getting plus one. So the effective value when you get this, it will be equal to two times Vm by pi. So this is basically the average output voltage of a full wave rectifier with midpoint type configuration. Now what happens to the RMS value of output voltage? So V out RMS fundamentally by definition, we know that it is basically the root mean square value. That is square root of one by pi into zero to pi Vm square sine square omega t into d omega t. Now, when we are simplifying this, I will be taking that is the value of Vm square that is inside the root, I will be taking it out. So you'll be left out with Vm, isn't it? 
and we will continue that square value in the brackets as it is that is 1 by pi and can we write sine square omega t as 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 so that can be written isn't it so i'll be writing 0 to pi into 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 into d omega t now solving this expression further you will be left out with vm into square root of 1 by pi and when we are taking this simplifying this with respect to each of the terms what we will be getting we will be getting 1 by 2 d omega t minus cos 2 omega t by 2 and you still have the integration that is 0 to pi over here now let us simplify this expression further you will be having vm into square root of 1 by pi that is d omega t is basically you will be getting omega t by 2 isn't it when you are integrating this cos 2 omega t by 2 will be getting sin 2 omega t by 4 basically you have to follow the chain rule when you are integrating it so v out rms is equal to vm into square root of 1 by pi when you are having the limits that is between 0 to pi isn't it so when you are substituting this pi by 2 minus sin pi by 2 is equal to 0 again minus in the upper limit minus the lower limit when you are doing it omega t substituting it as 0 you will be getting 0 minus 0 and again minus sin 0 you will be getting it as 0 so you will be left out with pi by 2 so cancelling pi and pi over here you will be left out with 1 by root 2 so v out rms is equal to vm by root 2 very very important expression again now what is piv it is basically peak inverse voltage we had previously seen piv is equal to 2 times vm but what is actually piv so it is basically the maximum reverse voltage that is appearing across the diode under reversed bias condition so when we derived it in the initial cases we saw the maximum voltage available is 2 times vm so this is basically the complete operation one of the major things that you have to remember is what is the drawback of this particular circuit what are they so it requires transformer which is usually bulky in nature and it adds to the cost as a result it is slightly expensive and the diode that is used should withstand two times the maximum supplied voltage isn't it so the diodes has to be designed for very higher rating so diodes rating is very very high it should be designed for a very high rating that means when they are designed for a very high rating the size of the diode will be high obviously the cost also will be high so that is why usually midpoint type rectifier configurations are rarely used in practice so these are the two drawbacks and i hope this entire operation is clear to you in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions to electronicsmaddy at gmail.com thanks a lot have a nice day